topic for lecture this week is uh, oxidative reduction reactions, which is a, a fairly complex chemistry topic that we're going to take a fairly simplified uh, look at. The reason we're going to be talking about these reactions is this information is critical for you understanding what we're going to be discussing next week when we look at how sugar is converted into uh, the energy from sugar uh, bonds is used to convert uh, or used to create ATP molecules inside the cell. So this is basically some definition time for you. What is oxidation and reduction? Okay, oxidation reduction reactions are commonly seen during uh, metabolic reactions and I promise you next week we'll see plenty of this. For now, let's just make sure you know what oxidation and reduction are in the first place. By definition, anytime um, I lose electrons, if a atom or a molecule loses electrons, uh, that's called oxidation. Okay. Now typically in, in organic reactions like the types we're going to be talking about next week that involve things like ATP and glucose and some other molecules like NAD and FADH, um, when I lose an electron at the same time, even though it's not usually said, uh, but at the same time I lose the electron, I also usually lose a hydrogen um, ion, an H+. Plus. The two go hand in hand. I lose the electron, I lose the hydrogen ion. That's just what happens in these organic re reactions we're going to be discussing. So for example, if I had, um, <clears throat> uh, oh wait, that's, that's the next one. Now the opposite of oxidation is reduction. And in reduction, I get an electron. And what goes unsaid is when I get the electron, I also get a hydrogen ion. Okay, so for example, let's look at this as an example. So suppose I have a molecule called NAD+. We're going to talk more about NAD+, uh, next class, but for now just think of it as a molecule, NAD+. Um, it's a fairly large molecule. And I add two electrons to it. I also add um, some, uh, at least one hydrogen ion in this case. Uh, because a hydrogen ion comes with the electron, I for or I create a molecule called NADH. Because I've added electrons, this is a reduction reaction. So this molecule right here, NADH, we would say is a reduced molecule. A good tip off a lot of times that you're looking at a reduced molecule uh, in terms of the types of reactions we're going to be looking at is if you see a hydrogen now attached that's a pretty good tip off that this um, molecule has just been reduced. Now this happens all the time in lots of different types of cellular respiration, respiration reactions which we're going to learn about next, um, uh, next lecture, next week. So for example, I can take sugar or a glucose molecule with oxygen and with the help of a whole bunch of different enzymes, I can create carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Um, now to help facilitate that process, um, well, that energy there is what the important thing is. We want to break down the glucose molecules so we can get energy and use that energy to make molecules of ATP. Um, what is implicit in this reaction summary here is that a lot of oxidation and redu reduction reactions are occurring. There's a lot of passing off of electrons and hydrogen ions from one molecule to another. Uh, NAD is just one of several different uh, molecules involved in this process as a common coenzyme and they, NAD commonly gets reduced, then it gets oxidized, it gets reduced, it gets oxidized. Uh, you'll see all that next week. Just remember for now the difference between oxidation and reduction and that when you see molecules that have a hydrogen attached, they're usually reduced. If I just see NAD plus like this, I know this is an oxidized molecule because I don't see the hydrogen attached. Now, what is it with these hydrogens? Well, hydrogens that come along with the electrons um, are turns out to be very critical piece of how we are going to go about manufacturing ATP molecules inside the cell. Next week we'll look at this in a lot more detail. For now, just know that there is a, a sequence of events called the electron transport chain that occurs inside the mitochondria of the cells and it involves the movement of both electrons and hydrogen ions in an orchestrated fashion with the help of a lot of different enzymes like the enzymes you see here and via this process we are able to manufacture ATP. 
Uh, we'll get into the specifics next class, but this involves the buildup of lots and lots and lots of different hydrogen ions on one side of a membrane inside the mitochondrion and then allowing those hydrogen ions to move down their concentration gradient and through a transport protein called ATP synthase and as they move through that ATP synthase down their down their concentration gradient we are literally converting the potential energy of all these stored hydrogen ions we're converting that into um, energy that we can utilize to take and attach a phosphate molecule to ADP. I know that seems really complicated. I promise next week we'll go into the specifics of how this occurs. Uh, I, but this will just help you. You'll at least be able to say, oh yeah, I remember Carrie at least mentioned electron transport chain last week. So that when you see it for the really in detail for the first time next week, hopefully it won't seem completely foreign to you. This process of moving hydrogen ions uh, down their concentration gradient is called chemiosmosis, kind of like movement of water. Remember osmosis is movement of water across a plasma membrane, but because we're moving chemicals, in this case hydrogen ions, we call it chemiosmosis. Okay, that's enough for this week. Um, I'll see you in class, and uh, next week we'll tackle the, the complex specific reactions involved in taking sugar and using it to make ATP molecules.